All right, hello everyone. Welcome to today's event. I'm Jason Gumper from MS Dynamics World. Really pleased to host the August 2022 Portals Community Call, uh, run as ever by Nicholas Hayduk. Uh, great to have him back, and I'm looking forward to his take on today's feature topic, uh, uh, Power Pages Walkthrough. Um, as we get started, please do know we welcome your questions through today's event. For the questions block in the webcast interface, uh, we will uh, keep an eye on that, and I know Nick will uh, will take all your questions. Uh, we also are recording today's event, so we'll be making this available to you after the session ends as well. So, uh, without any further delay, Nick, I'm going to hand things off to you. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, glad to be uh, back in this month. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, Power Pages. I know we've kind of briefly discuss it on a few other calls as part of the news, but I thought we'd just spend some time today just kind of walking through, you know, what is Power Pages, how does it compare to Power Apps Portals, and um, and just, yeah, take any questions that people might have about uh, this new thing that's there that, uh, well, by the end of the call, you'll hopefully realize it's not that new, just kind of a new version. So that's the plan for today. All right, uh, so just getting through our kind of usual stuff here, just a quick intro if this is your first call here, if you just kind of begun in the world of uh, Power Pages. Uh, my name is Nicholas Hayduk, uh, a president, the president and software engineer with Engineered Code Consulting, Inc., uh, based here in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP, and I've been working with uh, Power Apps Portals, Power Pages, ADX Studio Portals, all one and the same for the last uh, 12 years now, since uh, but since about 2009. So I've uh, been doing this a long time. Uh, if you if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, reach out to me. You can follow me on Twitter. Uh, we've got a blog, uh, a YouTube channel that we post a, a weekly tip on Power Pages. Um, we've got a uh, podcast that we do, um, which will be uh, lighting up again. I've just been in conversations here to. With some with a new uh, new co-host here to get the the podcast up and going again, so hoping to get a little bit more frequent on that as well. So, um, but yeah, please uh, connect with me or, or kind of reach out to me on any of those social social channels if you want to kind of learn more about Power Pages. Uh, yeah, Power Pages is my focus, so that's what uh, that's what you'll see if you subscribe to any of those things. All right. Um, as always, just want to say uh, thank you and express my appreciation for uh, to Jason and the team at MS Dynamics World for the partnership that we have on these community calls. Um, we get tons of great feedback on these calls, so uh, it wouldn't be possible without uh, Jason's uh, and MS Dynamics World's support. So uh, they're obviously a great resource for uh, Power Platform news. Uh, so uh, just really great to have them as a partner on these community calls. Uh, yeah, like I mentioned in the agenda uh, or in the intro there, uh, we'll talk about some news. We've got a little bit of news this month. Um, it's only been a few weeks since our last call, so so not as much as some other times, but uh, and then we'll get into today's topic, um, which is, as I mentioned, kind of a walkthrough of what Power Pages is, uh, the date and time of the next community call, and uh, there'll be time for, for Q&A at the beginning, or sorry, at the end there. Okay, so let's talk about the the news. Uh, so uh, this is kind of regarding our topic from last month where we had our pit who joined us and talked about the uh, Power Apps Portals, Power Pages build tools. So these are the tools within uh, Azure DevOps that uh, can simplify the ALM process. So that is the process of moving your portals configuration between dev, test, QA, UAT, prod, those types of things. Um, so uh, since that, uh, since our call a few weeks ago, uh, a new version has been put out there. So I just wanted to highlight that. And once again, thanks uh, our pit for for joining us last month. So uh, if that's uh, a set of tools that you're 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 using or looking to use, uh, you can go check out the the latest release here. That was uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago. Um, beyond that, it's it, we're getting close here. Uh, sadly, uh, in North America, um, to the uh, we're getting close to the end of summer here. Uh, which means that it's going to be fall, and that that means conference season. So there's a bunch of conference coming up here uh, in September and October. So I just wanted to kind of highlight some of these uh, that I know are going to have some uh, portals or page Power Pages content. So there's a Power Pages bootcamp um, that's run by uh, like I know our pit is heavily involved with with those um, 
those boot camps. So September 1st and 2nd, plus I think there's a hackathon on September 9th. So that's the kind of the power community group. Um, so I think there's a few MVPs who are involved in running those. So yeah, if you're if you're interested in more Portals content, uh, definitely sign up. I believe those are just free online events. So that's great. Um, there's also the Power Platform Conference, uh, which is going to be heavily attended by some Microsoft people. I think all the some of the big wigs from Microsoft will be there. So um, it's as close as we have to kind of the old convergence or the old kind of the official Microsoft conferences these days, it seems. Uh, so I think that's in Orlando, kind of near the, the end of September. So um, yeah, something to, to, to consider. Uh, I do just, for a lot of these conferences, there's lots of kind of online content and lots of kind of news comes out of those events as well. Uh, there's also the Nordic Summit in Stockholm. Uh, that's September 24th. So if you're on the other side of the world, um, that's something to definitely check out. I know that's run by some of our friends in, um, uh, you know, in, in Sweden, a uh, number of the MVPs out there are, are running that event. So it, it'll be a great, great event out there. So, uh, and I know there's some portal sessions for that as well. Uh, and then finally, the last one I have here on my list is the uh, Community Summit North America. So the Dynamics Community uh, Summit, uh, that one's October 10th to 13th uh, in Orlando. Um, I'll be attending that one. I, I think I have six sessions all devoted to Power Apps Portal. So, um, you know, I've always found that the Community Summit is kind of one of my favorite weeks of the year. So happy to be going back. I was in Houston last year. Obviously, I had to take some couple years off because of the pandemic, but um, happy that the conferences are back up and running and, and looking forward to attending uh, Summit this year um, and hope to see some of you folks there. Uh, all right, so that's kind of what I got for, for news this uh, past month. So let's talk about um, power, the Power Pages walkthrough. So I don't really have any slides prepared for this. I really just want to kind of bring up the interface uh, and talk about what Power Pages is because you know, I'm still being asked the question that was answered three or four years ago when, when Power Apps Portals came out. And the question was, well, should I use Dynamics 365 Portals or should I use the Power Apps Portals? And the question was, or the answer was uh, yes, because they are the same thing. Um, it was really more of a renaming than anything. It was just kind of the next version of the product. And so you you couldn't just use Dynamics 365 portals, you use Power Apps portals, and then you happen to use kind of some modules that were built into Dynamics for that. And so that's the same thing when people are asking me, I'm getting these questions all the time, should I use Power Apps or should I use Power Apps Portals or should I use Power Pages? The answer is they're, they're the same thing. Um, now, the way that I look at it, because there is some, like sometimes the questions have some, you know, they're like, should I use the thing that's in preview right now? So think of Power Pages as just the next version and the next version right now is still kind of in beta, it's still in preview. So long-term, if you're asking this question, like next year, what, what product do I want to use? Well, there's no choice. It, it is Power Pages. Power Apps Portals is just simply being renamed to Power Pages, but the, the newest version right now is in preview, which just means there's some new features that exist for Power Apps Portals that are rebranded to Power Pages, and those are available in preview right now. So um, anything that's in preview, it's generally not advised that you use that into a, in a production environment, um, especially since right now, the, the platform, again, it's ex the, the code base is the same. What Power Pages offer you is some different editing experiences, some more administration experiences, that sort of thing. But the core underlying portal engine is the same. So you really don't have to pick. Um, to me, the answer to that is generally, unless you're going to be using one of the new templates that we'll talk about here in a second, um, I would just stick with Power Apps portals for now and you will eventually have access here in the next few months, you'll have access to all of the, the new goodies that you get in Power Pages. But unless you really need the features that exist in the new editors, or you need one of those templates, if you stick with Power Pages for now, your Power Pages will get upgraded with the thing when it kind of goes GA and they'll be kind of, everything will become one. Uh, in the same way that the Dynamics 365 portals all were, you know, became Power Apps portals, um, and all of that experience was consolidated into one thing. So um, the good news is you don't have to make a choice. It's one of the same. Right now, 
I guess there's a bit of a choice just because it's, you know, something's in preview, but it's kind of like saying, if you got started with Dynamics right now, well, would you use Dynamics or would you use the one that's in preview? Well, if you're going to launch after the preview is going to be there, well, you might as well just use the preview because then you get all the latest stuff and then it'll be GA before you're you're able to, to launch anyways. But if you want to launch in the next month, then use Power Apps Portal because it's kind of the stable build right now. So it's really about, should I use the stable build or should I use the beta build? Well, that's kind of the same question, no matter what kind of software you're using. And that's that's how, how I would look at it right now, not as a distinct choice between two different products. Um, so I'm going to bring up Power Pages here. So um, like I said, Power Pages, um, if you are familiar with Power Apps Portals, it's it's the same it's the same product it's the same functionality the same core we've got lists and we've got forms and and how you do that um, everything you know about Power Apps Portals you know translates to Power Pages um, now Microsoft is trying to make it a little bit more standalone so the fact that they haven't included the word Power or they haven't included the word Apps in the name is very very like it was very much on purpose. Um, they are trying to make this product stand by itself within the Power Platform so that it doesn't have a dependency necessarily in Power Apps. So whereas before it was kind of along with model-driven apps, Canvas apps, and then there's Power Apps Portals, those were the three, but Power Apps Portals was always very tightly integrated with model-driven apps. There's a model-driven app for, for managing Power Apps Portals. Um, the forms and views that you customized and then that showed up on your portal were tied to building out a model-driven, you know, building out model-driven apps and forms, that sort of thing. So um, they were very much tied there. Microsoft, the direction that I see them going is they're, they're trying to make it a standalone product so that even if you knew nothing about, um, you didn't really have to know about model-driven um, Power Apps, the, you could still build one of these things. Now, that doesn't mean that those capabilities are going away. It just means that how they present it um, will be a little bit different. And I'll, and I'll kind of give you a specific example of that in a little bit here. But what I've done here is that you'll know that to you'll you'll see that in order to manage Power Pages, you no longer go to make.powerapps.com. You go to make.powerpages.microsoft.com. So this is where you this is kind of the landing page for Power Pages. Um, now, I've already created a site in here. Uh, so that is why I'm seeing this. I'm, it's, it's kind of already knows that I'm in there. If I hadn't created one yet, if I went to the screen, this make.powerpages.microsoft.com, I would see a screen that says, hey, welcome to this, create a site. So it kind of give me a way to create a site right away. Um, but now what we're seeing is one where I've already seen. So this kind of area at the top, this would be like a full screen experience where it kind of walks you through the process of creating a new site. Um, and that's another thing I want to highlight just in terms of terminology. Um, before we used to say, oh, you know, you installed a portal. Well, now the terminology is a site. So every every different, what we used to say before was, you know, you'd have three different portals. Now the terminology is site. So what you have are Power Pages sites. So you can see in this case, I have a single site that I've created. Um, now I can go through the process here of creating multiple sites. So if I click this create a site button here, it's going to take me through the process of creating a new uh, a new Power Pages site. So the next thing I want to talk about is when we're creating these sites, um, we have the option to select these templates. Now this is one of the big places where Microsoft has been investing is in these templates. So um, there is this kind of default. You can see it's called Power Portals default. Um, this is what used to be known as the starter template for Power Apps Portals, uh, also known as the basic template. So this is the one that just had kind of a home page, a couple of content pages, authentication, that sort of thing, but didn't have any of the Dynamics functionality. So if you just want a, a plain kind of starter one where you're going to kind of build up the thing yourself, then you use that one. And that's kind of, like I said, it's been the one that's kind of been there all along. There has been some kind of, have some updates to the template, but it's basically just kind of the, the next generation of that, that basic or that starter template. However, with Power Pages, you will see some new templates that are available. Um, you'll see that there's one called Financial. There's one called Education. There's one called Government. There's one called Cross Industry. Or sorry, those are the tags. The actually the template names are scheduling me with the financial institution, the after-school program, the building permit, and the uh, new employee onboarding. 
Now, in fact, this is, oh, coming soon, yeah. So two out of these are still coming soon. So you can see that the, uh, the permit application and the uh, employee onboarding checklist, those are both coming soon. So at this point, if you wanted to try one of these templates, there, there are two options here. There's the schedule the meeting with the financial institution, and there's the after school program. So what these templates are, are think of it as uh, someone at Microsoft um, has basically installed one of these basic portals and then done further customizations. So whether it was creating more tables, uh, creating lists and, and views and forms and all that sort of stuff, and that's what gets installed as part of the, the installation. Um, so it's similar to how with Power Apps portals, we had the basic one, and then you had customer self-service, employee self-service, um, community, and partner. However, in this case, just to be very clear, is that none of these have a dependency on Dynamics 365 uh, customer engagement. So these all work with just kind of a base um, Dataverse environment without any of the Dynamics third-party uh any of those first party apps within Dynamics. So that's kind of where there's a, a bit of a difference between the products. Now, the fact that you can't go in and into Power Pages and create the customer self-service or the partner or the employee self-service or the community, um, the fact that you can't do that now, don't take that as an indication as you won't be able to. That's actually one of the things that's in the release notes is that they are turning that on. So you will eventually see the ability to create those kind of those legacy Power Apps portals templates those will show up in here as well. So this, again, just emphasizing the point that this is just the next version of Power Apps Portals. All the things you could do in Power Apps Portals before, you're gonna see here, they're just still working on kind of filling some of those gaps so that you can, you know, once this goes live, you're gonna be able to create a Power Page, or um, you're gonna be able to create a partner site, you're gonna be able to create a, a community portal. All those portals that already existed um, will be enabled through here as well. So right now we've got a couple, we've got two more coming soon. Um, and I know that there are even more planned. Um, this is really going to be a focus for, for Microsoft to, to kind of get people to, to get on board with these things is, is to provide them with uh, samples or kind of templates to, to build with these things so you don't kind of have to start from scratch. So I know uh, I, I know all the time they're asking, like, you know, what are the use cases that people are, are using this for so that they can build these templates to kind of give people a, a head start in these things. So um, within Power Pages, one of the big things are these templates um, and uh, the ability to kind of extend these. Now, um, if you do want to install one of these and play around with it, um, just be be aware that a lot of the times they, they've kind of built out these really sophisticated interfaces and they look really cool, they work really well. Um, they're using techniques like the Web API, they're using Liquid, they're using all these kind of um, uh, advanced techniques as well in there. So they're a great learning opportunity as well. So if you ever want to learn how to do some some more sophisticated, some more pro dev uh, type things, uh, taking a look at what was done in these uh, templates is a great way to see kind of how you can uh, take your, your Power Pages site to the next level. So they are a great example of what you can do with Power Pages. Um, like I said, there's going to be more coming down the pipe. Um, so keep an eye out for all the different templates that are going to be in there. Um, and I expect this list to grow and grow and grow over time. Similar to how in, uh, if we go back to make to the Power Apps, when we go into creating an app, you know, you've got all these templates. Now, I don't know, I think I'd be lying to you if I said there's, I think there's gonna be soon this many different types, but like it's, it's similar to how they gave you all these different Canvas apps. Um, it's the same idea within Power Pages, there's gonna be all these different uh, templates that you can use that you can start from, so. Um, yeah, and if anyone has any questions throughout this process, please, uh, as Jason mentioned, just drop them into the questions area and I'll, I'll try and keep an eye on those. Um, so I'm just going to cancel this. Uh, essentially, if I were to, say, choose this template, I would be asked to basically give the site a name. It's going to create the web address. You can see it's still using powerportals.com. Um, and I can also, uh, depending on whether you have a... Um, a dataverse environment because this is still the preview it's all kind of get gets tied to a single dataverse environment right now um but uh yeah there, there's, you're going to be able to select which which environment you or which dataverse environment you want to get it installed into so pretty simple the process to get installed just kind of pick your template give it a name give it an address and away you go um so within the um the make.powerpages.com uh, you'll see that 
the home page essentially gives you a list of all the different sites that you have. Uh, in our case, we have the one, uh, and you can kind of think of this as the um, the, the kind of the admin experience for your particular uh, site. If I click the edit, that's going to take me into the studio. Now I'm going to talk about this in a second, so I'm just going to back out of it, but, but we'll kind of get into this a little bit more because that's really where Microsoft has made a lot of their investment for this. I'm just going to get out of this. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of the editing experience, uh, what, you, what we used to kind of call the power, um, the portal studio, but you do have other options in here. You can, uh, you can manage your portal. That's going to take you to the kind of the old school power portals, power apps portals admin center. So again, just emphasizing the fact that this is just the same, it's the same technology underneath. So all of these things that you'd have known, Hey, I want to do custom certificates, change the dynamics instance. Uh, set up SharePoint, Power BI, all these things, run the portal checker, they, they all still exist and basically just new new links to, to find. It's here, I can click preview, I've got options to either view it on mobile or view it on desktop. That's going to open up my particular portal here. So this is just basically a replacement for the um, make.powerapps.com, uh, just specifically tailored to uh, Power Pages. Um, if I click the templates button, that's really just going to take me to where I can see a list. So it's, it's a good way of seeing the list without kind of clicking that create port, uh, sites button. So this is where I can kind of see all the templates that are currently available. Uh, they've got some different categorization here, but again, we've just we've got the we've got the five, we've got the basic one, we've got the two new custom ones, and then we've got the two new ones that are coming coming soon. So just another way to see those templates. Uh, and then we've got this learn area. So um, lots and lots and lots of content, uh, lots of learning content, the videos um, on how to use Power Pages, um, how to build with it, customize, extend. Um, uh, I'm, I know the, the, the team that's working on this documentation, uh, they're working very hard and uh, the documentation has come I mean, leaps and bounds over the last few years. Like it's it's used to be kind of a pain point, and now it's kind of a point of pride almost is that the documentation and and all the stuff that's there. So, um, and it's also kind of moved on to it used to be just very kind of more like refer, uh, reference documentation, like um, you know this is what this setting does. But now they're they're even starting to do more like um, you know real world scenarios where. You know, so all you need to do this, well, these are the steps you need to follow versus it just being like, oh, this is what this setting does kind of thing. So really, really happy with what with where the, the documentation has come. Um, and like that is kind of just referenced directly here, uh, right in the, the experience here. And if you click one of these links, for example, it's going to take you to the docs.microsoft.com. So still all within this same, still within docs.microsoft.com, but I just like how they're, they're, they're surfacing it right directly here in make.powerpages. Uh, all right, so let's look at the let's look at the editor because that's where some of the a lot of the new fun is. So if I click edit. This is like I said, this is basically the new version of what used to be called the Portal Studio, where you can go in and kind of edit your your um, your site. Um, and it's you know a lot of this is going to be familiar. You know a lot of the capabilities are very very much the same, but there are some some new goodies in here. Assuming that this loads. Yep, there we go. Um, so, you know, again, you're going to know some of the similarities in that, like, you can go through your pages, you see the structure of your um, of your site. We, we, we've got it broken now. We've got our main navigation, which kind of shows up here at the top. And then we've got other pages. So they've kind of made it a little bit easier to, to manage how your main navigation versus the other pages work. Um, but you can still kind of click on any of these. It's going to refresh this and it's going to allow you to, to edit these. Um, I know that they're working on um, lots of things. So in here, you can see, oh, here's the form. So this is new, right? In the old one, you could do some very basic things. Uh, this is something I know that they're, they're, they're kind of expanding and they've got this kind of in a modal. They've replaced the interface. It was kind of on the, the, le uh, the right hand side before. Now you can kind of add, edit the fields. Okay, well, what does that do? Um, 
this is getting into the data side. This is getting into customizing the form side. So I made a comment uh, a few minutes ago about how they are really trying to make this standalone. So you'll recognize this screen. This is a screen where I typically will drag and drop fields. And this is where you'd used to go into make.powerapps.com. You go into your solution, you would go into your table and you'd edit the forms. Um, Microsoft really wants you to not have to leave the Power Pages admin experience in order to do things like that. So that's where they have added some capabilities in here to be able to uh, manage your forms and your and your views and all those sorts of things directly within this thing without ever having to leave this experience. So, um, yeah. So if I click on here, we have that ability to edit fields. We've also got direct links to edit the permissions. So this is tied into the table permissions area. Uh, table permissions did exist. Uh, there was a, uh, an editor within the uh, for table permissions in the um, in the Portal Studio. Um, but uh, so this is not that this is necessarily new, but they've now kind of it's lit up into all these different places. So it's a lot more about being in context. You don't have to go to a separate section of the portal or of the sort of the uh, admin experience. You can simply click on that, manage the, the permissions here. And this is again showing you the ones that are related to this particular form. You can then click this link and, and be taken to the screen where you can manage all of the table permissions. So what they've really done here is they're really trying to simplify the experience. They're trying to make it so that even if you do know all these things about Power, Power Apps portals, um, they're, they're really targeting kind of the person who maybe doesn't all have that, that background and making it easier for them to come in and say, hey, I just want to create a, I want to create a form. I want to create a page. I want to create a form. Um, I don't want to have to know about model-driven apps. I don't want to have to know any about that sort of stuff. I just want to create, you know, I want to create my site. So they've done that by really kind of enhancing this and, and building in a bunch of new capabilities um, within the, the Portal Studio. Uh, and then this is kind of general, um, you, know, you can duplicate and this is more kind of the content authoring experience. But again, within the form, you're able to choose the table, select a form, um, whether this updates creates a new record. So some of this is basically just trying to replicate a little bit about what was available or of what's available in the portal management app. And some of this was configurable in the portal studio, um, but I, I foresee that they're gonna be uh, investing in trying to do as much as, as, as they can in this particular experience and trying to eliminate uh, clicking on this open portal management app. Uh, in the same way that we've got the new make.powerapps.com and then there's the kind of the, the classic solution configuration or some of the classic settings that we still have to go to where Microsoft is really just trying to Every time you click that, they're like, well, why do you need to click that? You know, they're always looking for your feedback so they can eliminate those gaps. I kind of see this as the same thing. They're going to put this link here. It's still going to be necessary for a while, um, but they're going to try and, you know, the, the, the common things that people keep doing over in the portal management app, they're going to try and re reduce that so that you don't have to go over there. They're going to, they're going to add it in here. Um, the other area that they've made some changes is within the styling. Um, now, to be honest with you, I didn't use the theming capabilities that much in the old Portal Studio because they're, it just wasn't flexible enough for most of our projects. It only gave you a few, you know, a handful of, of settings that you could change to kind of uh, update the look and feel of your portal. And, and to be honest, it just wasn't enough for us to do that. Um, and we had guys uh, like, we had people on our team that were just, could create a, a more complete bootstrap theme that was just more applicable for our clients. Um, with this new uh, theming editor, um, that may change um, because they give us, whereas before we had maybe, I don't know, four or five options, now we've got dozens of options. So if I look into my theme and I want to create a, a custom theme, um, discard, sorry. Uh, so we do have the ability to uh, edit these things. Uh, I wonder what they've changed here. So I'm going to refresh this. Curious as to what happened to my theming editor. Custom CSS. Oh, it's probably because if I disable this. And then
I wonder if there should be a lot more options here in the theming editor. Um, it was here the other day. I wonder where it went. There's customs. Um, okay, let me come back to that one. Uh, portal basic theme. I wonder if I added some settings in the back end that messed with that. Let me just check the web files. Portal. Okay, let me come back to that. So we'll talk about theme here in a second. So um, onto the data side. So I kind of already showed this a little bit about the ability to um, modify whether it's the forms, but you'll see that we also have the ability to create a new table. So if I want to create a table, I can do in here. I don't have to go to um, to the, the the maker experience for Power Apps to do that. Now I'll put a little bit of a caveat. Um, I personally will probably not be using this until they add one important feature, and that is uh, right now you don't have the opportunity to select which solution any of your customizations will go into. Um, for the projects that we work on, which usually have a pretty rigid uh, ALM mm -hmm. requirement moving between all the different environments, um, it's very important that we have the columns and tables and forms and views that we work on in a particular solution that we then use to move it between environments. Um, that right now is not the case here. Um, these are not put into any particular solution that you can uh, designate. So uh, in the short term, this is not something necessarily that people who are familiar with kind of the solution capabilities would, would probably be using a lot. Uh, we are hopeful that that type of capability will be added where you can specify hey, any of these changes that we're making are part of, you know, pick your solution. Um, but that is not the case at this time. So, um, but you can see that they do have the ability to, you can actually see the table data here. You can see the the views that we have for the contact table. You can see the forms that we have for the contact table. You can create new tables. So a lot of what you can do within a solution in terms of editing the tables, the forms, the views, that sort of thing can be done directly in this interface. Um, we're still just kind of holding out for the ability to do that within, within a particular solution. Um, all right, uh, and then there's the, the setup area. So the setup area has consolidated some of the, the features that used to be in, say, in the make, maker experience. So uh, we've got our ability to uh, configure identity providers. So the Azure AD B2C, for example, if I go into here, um, I can set up Azure AD B2C. Again, this is, these were features that existed in the maker experience for uh, Power Apps. Um, so those are in here. I mentioned the, the table permissions, uh, the ability to add those in here. Uh, there's the progressive web app. Now I know they're, they're looking at the ability to turn that on. Um, this is still something that's uh, in progress. There's a few things in here that are, are work in progress uh, that essentially just give you links to the admin center. So when they say the admin center, they're talking about the Power Pages admin center or the Power Apps Portals admin center. So this thing. So some of the things could still kind of look out here, um, but you can you can be sure that they're kind of working on these things as part of the kind of the GA, and we'll see which one of them, you know, which of these make it into to GA or not. Um, and then there's just this option here where you can look at um, flows. So that's going to take you over to Power Automate. Uh, and we've also got another link here, so you can always get to the portal management app as well. Um, because the reality is, um, I don't know, I, I don't know if we'll ever get to the point where we won't need the portal management app. Maybe, maybe we will, but I think that that's a long time in the future. So even if you look at, if you go to one of your basic forms. Um, you know, there's so many features in the basic forms that I'm not sure if Microsoft is going to invest in creating a new experience for all of them. They will probably tackle all the ones that are used on a regular basis. But uh, I, I, I don't know, I, I kind of feel like this portal management app is going to live on for a long time, 
for a lot of the edge cases that they they don't want to get rid of the feature but they don't necessarily want to invest in the in the new experience for them so i i suspect we're we're going to have the portal management app for for many years to come um so not something that's going to disappear but it does you know there's going to be things like you know ads and polls i don't know like i, I don't see a ton of people using those so will they deprecate them i don't know if they'll deprecate them i think they'll just say well we'll just leave them in the portal management app and and, and that's what and that's where they'll stay so um so i do think that the portal management app is is here for for a while still all right um so the last thing i want to show i did want to show that styling so let's see if i can figure out what's going on with the styling here so there's it's it must have recognized i got custom css in there so you guys can watch while i troubleshoot this uh so that is the asp site i believe so i know i've got this orange one was a custom css file that i created i'm just going to try deleting that if not maybe i'll just try spinning up a, a default site and see if i can get that going here because um the styling stuff is pretty cool i just think it's somehow been tricked into thinking i've overwritten some of their the boot or that some of the styling so that it no longer wants to give me the default one okay let's try this so let's go back to home i'm going to create a site I'm going to create just a basic one, choose this template, site one, done. We'll see if it, this may not take too long because I, um, hopefully it's just going to uh, leverage the one that I've already got here. We'll see how long this takes. See if we can get that styling editor always the fun when you talk about a project or a product that's in preview uh, some of these things change and uh, i would have set up that theme a few months back so it, it could be that uh, they, they've added more capabilities that the the old one that i have in there just doesn't work anymore so we'll give this a second um in the meantime uh other than the styling thing that's kind of what i want to, to cover was about okay if you're familiar with power page or power apps portals i'm hoping this kind of alleviated any fear that hey this is a completely brand new thing you're still dealing with you're still putting on uh, forms and lists and all those things um it's really just kind of a new editing experience um lots of new features being added but but to be honest with you i mean those features would have been added whether it was power apps portals or power pages so um nothing to be too scared about um so uh just curious if there's any if anyone had any questions about um about this kind of this quote unquote new product or or anything i guess unrelated to that as well I'll, I'll kind of open up for questions and i can see if i can get this styling work but please drop your questions in as i see if i can drop in and i'll see it's just, just getting my set ready here mm, let's see what this customized theme i guess if worst case i can show the uh the documentation on the on the style workspace um the idea is that you can edit you you choose this color palette so that's one of the things i really liked about um this new thing is that uh you can pick you know i think it's 12 colors something like that so it's like here's all your colors and then and then later on in the interface when you're like hey what's the color for my heading you're not just picking from this color picker again where every time you pick the shade of green you like it's slightly different instead you pick your color palette and then you refer to that color palette uh in in all the sections further down but you are able to change fonts you're able to change border radiuses color sizes all those sorts of things so before it was a handful of colors you could change with the out of the box one now there's a ton of uh ton of other changes that you can do still getting ready there so yeah i really like the color palette and but what i what i like most of all is just the the huge number of variables that we can edit uh you have control over kind of what buttons look like your your header your footer uh your basic topography all of that is, it can be styled through the um, the styling wizard here, and like I said, it, it kind of gives you um, the control that we would have 
you know, the, the control that we were looking for before, uh, I think in a lot of our projects, rather than relying on a completely custom bootstrap theme, which is what we typically do, um, it, uh, it, can, it will give us enough control that we can achieve what, what our clients need. Um, in case anyone's wondering, yes, it's still Bootstrap 3. Um, uh, do I think Microsoft is going to update that at some point? Sure, yes, it won't be that way forever. Who knows when it won't be Bootstrap 3, but at least in the short term, everything I know that's coming out here um, is it's all still Bootstrap 3. So there hasn't been any major updates to the, the framework or the CSS framework for Power Pages. Um, so still all in line with, with with um, what was in Power Apps portals. Um, I think we'll see, give this another minute. Just refresh, because it's always fun to click a button. Yeah, I'm still just getting my theme. Um, so I will, again, open the floor to any questions. If not, I'll give this another minute or two to see if this loads up. I'm not sure how quickly these, this site will spin up, if we can get a test drive of the theming. Um, but that was kind of what I want to cover today. So I'll, I'll open the floor to any questions. Um, if not, I will uh, just quickly jump back here. Um, just talk about our next call. Uh, our next call is planned for uh, September 15th uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I believe that's 8 p.m. UTC time. So that's the um, that's the that's the plan for next month. Uh, no uh, specific topic uh, I've selected yet. So if there's any particular topic that you would like to see covered, uh, I'm definitely open to uh, topic suggestions. Um, Otherwise, let me just flip back here to see if still getting my site ready. So um, yeah, I'll maybe just hang out here for a few more minutes. I don't see any questions yet. So maybe just hang out here for a couple more minutes, see if this will load up. Um, but uh, I understand if, if you, if you want to drop and you've got other things to do other than to wait, I totally understand. So um, I will... Uh, just again express my uh, gratitude to Jason and the team at MS Dynamics World uh, and uh, yeah any more questions uh, otherwise I uh, hope to see you guys next month. Hey Nick can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, you mentioned uh, early on some of the sort of clarification points um, that you that you tend to offer about what what exactly Power Pages is. Um, have you had any other interesting responses from people sort of beyond that when they've actually looked at what some of the uh, enhancements are versus what's staying the same? Maybe what what you, you or others would like to see them do next. Good question. Yeah, I mean, I to be honest, the whole kind of Power Pages and the the authoring experience that I was just showing there. Um, it's not how we build the sites that we build anyways. So it's not really a game changer for us. What I've, kind of the other focus as part of Power Pages has just to make them a little more, even more enterprise ready. So there's been features that were included. And again, is this a Power Pages feature or is it a Power Apps Portals feature? Well, it's like the answer is yes. It's, it's just a feature that would be there no matter what, but it's things like the, the, the content delivery network that they're gonna start supporting. Um, support for uh, hooking this into the Windows uh, application firewall and some of those more just kind of enterprise uh, things where you get into these um, really large organizations and they've got these security teams and there's all these questions they have and it's like hey we, we finally got some some better answers to that so um, that's what I've I'd like to see um, you know that it, it's <laughs> We, we've really gotten a lot of things that we wanted over the last uh, couple of years. I would say when Microsoft first took over the product, there was, you know, they were just kind of getting in there and turning it into, uh, you know, they took what ADX Studio had produced and they just kind of turned it into their, you know, the Microsoft Cloud offering. So the first little while there wasn't a ton of like new fancy features, um, but then we got the web API, that was huge. Then we got the, the, the file and the image types uh, multi-select so some of these things to bring the product up to parity with the rest of the power platform so that's always going to be something that we would like to see is 
bring it into parity with Dataverse, like all the features that Dataverse has, we want to see those available. Um, I think one of the big ones is the support for business rules. Um, the fact that without um, writing JavaScript, you can um, you can create uh, you know you know relatively complex validation logic that exists in model driven apps. We'd love to see that show up on, on Power Pages. Um, another one would be uh, support for Power FX. Now, with portals, you've got your liquid code. Um, you've got Power Effects now that's kind of coming down, and I do think long-term portals will support Power Effects. I, I don't know, you know, when that's coming, but I, I, I think at some point it's safe to say that when Microsoft kind of picks a language for the Power Platform, the, the plan is to kind of put it in as many places as possible. So that that would be another good one. Um, I mentioned the Bootstrap three things, so I do think that at some point Microsoft is going to have to tackle that. Um, it's a nasty problem, so I kind of sympathize with them. Like, there's no good answer to like, what do you do with the thousands of sites that already exist that are built on Bootstrap three? Since it's just not a, a, a there's really no upgrade path from Bootstrap three to Bootstrap four or five or six that is clean. Like, it's not a, um, it's not backwards compatible. So the upgrade path is kind of have to look at everything. Um, so uh, they're in kind of a no-win situation there. It's it's, it's tough. Um, but I think that's a, another area that people would like to, to focus on. Um, the other thing I think is the, the support for PCF controls, whether it's going to be coming from Microsoft or whether it's a community, um, uh, I, I'm excited to see where, you know, we've already got the PCF.gallery, so kind of like the, a public space where people can post all these kind of community contributions for PCF controls that can go on a portal um, or PCF controls that can go on module driven apps or Canvas apps. So I think that's another area that whether it's Microsoft making the investment or community people are are, are adding some value there. Uh, being able to just easily say drop a calendar control, like you know if I go into this thing, click on um, and edit a page. Um, lots of people are looking for that more kind of WordPress Square, um, um, uh, Squarespace. Um, uh, Wix, that sort of thing, where they are just clicking on things and, and adding things. So we do have some of that right now, um, but certainly not to the level that some of the uh, kind of more content, um, like the kind of the pure CMSs, they, they've certainly got more for sure. Um, so, you know, we got these things, we can add sections, we can go layout, we change the layout here vertical, horizontal, duplicate, delete, you know, there's all these things that you can do. Um, so, you know, add new sections so we can add columns, spacers. This is going to add um, like right here. We could add text, buttons, images, video, spacer, like these things. It'd be real cool if like um, uh, instead of just these kind of the box ones, if you get say PCF controls to that and then you just have a whole you know, you're opening up the world to having all, you know, all these different uh, types of, of content management widgets that can show up on your portal. Um, I do have a question about licensing. Um, so yeah, when it comes to licensing, the way I would look at it is it, it's just Power, Power Apps Portal. So whatever the licensing is for Power Apps Portals right now, that's licensing for Power Pages. Um, I think, uh, you know, it's pretty well known that most people would like the, the licensing to change. So um, just kind of in general with the way that it works, it can be difficult to, to kind of guesstimate what sort of licensing you need. Um, but I suspect that if there were to be any licensing changes, they would just be licensing changes to both portals and pages and that sort of thing. So as of right now, uh, I haven't heard of any uh, changes to, to, to the licensing, um, but if that were to happen, it would be just kind of a change to the licensing in general. So uh, right now, if, if you're looking at um, uh, building out with Power Pages, you just it's the licensing that you would see for Power Portals. Let's see if this thing is uh, is this thing awake yet? Oh, let's see. Okay, let's see if we can get that theming editor in there. Unless it's just a uh... ah, there we go, there we go. 
Okay, um, we've still got a couple minutes here. So this is a theme editor. So yeah, like I said, what I really like about this thing, you've got the color palette, so it comes, you can pick any one of these themes here. You could obviously create your own custom one. So you create these themes and then you have the ability to kind of modify your color palette. So I'm gonna go in here, no, 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 I'm gonna pick some ugly red one. There, it's there. But now when I go to select my background color, what I'm doing is I'm selecting from my palette. So if I wanna use that red, I can use that red in a bunch of terrible places, but I can still use that red if I want to. So if I go to my title, oh, I want my title to be red too. So now at least I have the consistency of that. So maybe I want my button colors to be red. So you can see as I'm changing that, I'm selecting that red. Um, but in terms of like, like I mentioned before, before you got to pick like five colors, now you pick your background color, you can pick your fonts. So the, the font family, the weight, the size, the color for titles, heading one, two, three, subheadings, paragraphs, site navigation, all these different things. Within the buttons, you've got your, you know, your background color, your, your style. So you can have fill or I can say, oh, I want to be outlined. Um, you can, again, your font, weight, size, um, the, the font color. So I can go in here and make that a terrible uh, color for um, the, the background, but uh, so be it. Uh, the hover style, like before you got to pick like five colors and now I can pick what happens when I hover. Like, that's pretty cool. I do this and, and I can pick what happens when, uh, uh, when I do that. Uh, the font color on hover, like uh, secondary buttons and I can pick what happens on the links. Uh, as well as kind of some of the margins and spacing. So you can do a lot more with this theming editor than you could do with the other one. And uh, yeah, I think this is kind of the nice balance between too many options and probably the options that most people are gonna want to see. So really like this new, new theming editor. All right. Um, I, that's what I want to cover for today. I don't see any other questions. So Jason, I think we can probably wrap it up there. All right, great job as always, Nick. And thanks to everyone in the audience for your time and your attention. We'll be following up with the information on the recording, but we will end things there. Have a great day, everyone.